And then my third final recommendation, of course, it has to be my song. It's like the one song that I ever put out that was kind of like a Christmassy song. And it's called Nogyojo in Korean, which means like melt me. But like, I think <laughs> in English, you said like melt my heart. Nogyojo is like such like a common phrase. In Korean, but for some reason in English, it just sounds so cheesy. It's kind of like stop being so cold to me, warm up to me. No, it's like melt my heart. It's like you make me feel like really warm and like oh, that kind of thing. That's like a I'll stop the world and melt with you. <laughs> I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Um, but that's that song, and it was this was like the first song that I actually wrote like the lyrics and melodies to, and like. We put it out. Yeah. Um, I had taken part in some songs before, but like this is the first one where I like really wrote the entire melody, and you can tell that it was my first time because. <laughs> Why? I gotta hold on. I gotta look this up. So this came out in two thousand fourteen, and this was because like I was so upset that my album, my company would not release songs for me. I was like, just put something out. And they're like, we don't have songs. I was like, I'll go write a song. Let's go write a song. So literally, I walked to the studio. I was like, I'm going to write a Christmas song. Please give me a Christmas track. Give me sleigh bells. Give me a bunch of jingles. And we're going to write it. And we wrote it. And it was me and some great people. And oh, wow. It actually did really well. If we look at the charting info, it did really well in the charts. I don't know how. But anyways, uh, the reason you can tell it's the first time I ever wrote a song is because when I wrote it, I was like, there's no room to breathe in this song. I didn't think that part through. Mm. I'd never written like so much in a song. And so I was like, all these melodies sound great. Just cram it into one. And then like, now you got to go sing it. And I was like, oh, I can't. It's so hard. I almost died singing it. I like couldn't breathe. It was really difficult. It's still difficult to this day. I barely sing that song. That's like a thing most people wouldn't think that like, you, that's a thing that artists have to think of. You have to like, think about that. But, like, people who listen to music, they're not like, oh, I wonder how they're breathing in between right. the lines, right? Well, I mean, like, if you're not singing the song, like, a lot of people don't actually sing their songs. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but. But as someone who does sing as someone your who songs. does sing his songs live. <laughs> yeah. You have to think about it. So now when I write songs, I'm intentional. I'm like, Ooh. what? Can I, where can I breathe, first of all? Second of all, if if it does have to be a certain way, then, like, how can I arrange it? So that either it's a chorus in the background that's doing it and I just sing on top of it. Or we like do a bunch of effects so it, it works. But that is definitely something. And then I also have to think about when I'm on stage, how am I going to perform it? And that's something that we have to take into consideration because I do so many tours and live shows. Yeah, I notice sometimes when I listen to like or watch live performances, I get interested in what they choose for the backup vocals. So, like, deciding what they will actually sing and right. what will just play. Right. Yeah. Right. And then there are some people who would, like, just... Well, there are some people who don't sing at all. There are some people who do it, and then they'll do, like, the backup vocal thing, and then they'll just, like, dance. Or do, like, a cool move. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm jealous because I can't do that and look cool. <laughs> uh, so I just have to sing, like, the entire thing. This is the intro jingle. This is the K-pop Devok Show with Eric Nam Ooh. 